In this lecture, we introduce the mesh current method for determining currents and voltages in a circuit and show how to use this method for a circuit that contains independent voltage sources. Well, I'd like to introduce the mesh current method by looking at this circuit that has two voltage sources and three resistors. I've labeled these three currents in the circuit as IA, IB, and IC. And what I'm envisioning is a situation where I know the voltages associated with these sources, and I know these resistances, and I'd like to find, or I'd like to solve for, the three currents. Now, if I label the voltage across each of these resistors, so I'll call this voltage V1 with a polarity dropping in this direction, I'll call the voltage across this resistor V2, and I'll call the voltage across this resistor V3. Well, once I've labeled those voltages, I could then use Kirchhoff's voltage law to write two equations in terms of these voltages. So let me start here in this, re in this part of the circuit, and I'm going to proceed around this loop. And what I'm going to do is write down all of the voltage drops. So as I move this way, I go from the positive to the negative. So I will drop by that voltage, V1. And then I'll drop by this voltage, V3. And then I'll increase. So that's like a negative drop. So I'll subtract VA. And then I'll set that equal to zero since I'm all the way around the loop. Now again, the way I've done this is as I've moved around the loop, when I encounter a positive sign first on the reference voltage, I'll write that as a positive component to the sum. And when I encounter the negative polarity first, I wrote it as a negative. Now there's nothing special about that. We could have done it the other way, but this is the way I'll choose to do it. Now let's go over to the other loop. And let's start in this corner and move our way around. And in this case, the first thing we'll do is drop by V2. And then we'll drop by VB. And then we'll increase, or we'll have a negative drop of V3. And then we'll be back up to this top location. So we'll set that equal to 0. Now, if I know the resistances and the source voltages, I could rewrite these equations in terms of these unknown currents, IA, IB, and IC. So V1, well, we have IA moving from left to right, and that's in the direction of the drop. So from Ohm's law, V1 is R1 times IA. And then V3, well, that, it, that would be R3 times IC, since IC is moving in the direction of the voltage drop. So that's R3 times IC. And then I'll just take this known voltage to the other side, whatever that happens to be. Then for this equation, V2, well, that's R2 times IB. So I'm going to just express that equation in terms of these unknown currents. And then I'll take the VB to the other side. And we have uh, minus V3. And again, V3 is R3 times IC. So minus And that's equal to a negative VB. I'm going to take this VB to the other side. Now let's see, we've got three unknowns, IA, IB, and IC, but only two equations. So in general, we're not going to be able to solve this. But if we go up to this node and we use Kirchhoff's current law, well, then we can say, well, we have this current IA coming in. So I'll write that with a negative sign. And I have IB leaving. And I have IC leaving. 
and that would be my third equation. So now I would have three equations, three unknowns, and I should be able to solve for IA, IB, and IC. Now it turns out though that we can solve for these three currents with only two equations. And the key to doing that involves defining something that we call mesh currents. Well for this circuit we might define two mesh currents. Now one of these I'll define for this loop and I'm going to call this one I1 and then I'll define another mesh current around this loop and I'll call it I2. Now if you'll notice I've define both of these mesh currents in the clockwise direction. That's just a personal preference. It's the way I most often do it. It's the way you'll see it many times in books. Of course, if you prefer to define one in an, in an alternate direction, that's okay too, but you'll just have to use the rules for relating these currents to voltages very carefully as you go work your way around the loops, and we'll show an example here. So let's say we define these two mesh currents and what we'd like to do is write down an expression using Kirchhoff's voltage law for the voltage drops as we move around the circuit. Around loops in this circuit are the meshes that we've defined. Well first it's important to understand what we mean by a mesh current. Now if you look at this mesh where we've defined I1 and you look at the regions where these wires do not connect to any other mesh within a circuit, that is any other enclosed region within the circuit, that I1 is simply that current. So in this case, I1 is actually IA. Likewise, for I2, since it's moving around, on this outer part, I2 is just this current, IB. But through this region, this line that we had originally defined a current IC, that connects two meshes. In that case, we have to look at the mesh currents, and we've got one mesh current going down in the direction of IC and one mesh current flowing upward opposite of IC. So in that case, this current IC is the mesh current I1 minus the mesh current I2. Now, if you think about that, I1 is IA, I2 is IB, and we've just said that IC is I1 minus I2, which is the same as saying IC is IA minus IB. Well, as we did just a moment ago, let's start in this upper corner and use Kirchhoff's voltage law to work our way around the loop. And this time we'll define the voltage drops in terms of the mesh currents I1 and I2. So as we move in this direction, I1 is flowing from left to right through this resistor, so we'll see a voltage drop of R1 times I1. Then as we come through resistor R3, as we move around this mesh loop, we'll see a voltage drop of R3 times the current flowing in this direction. Well, that's I1 minus I2. So we'll write that as I1 minus I2. And then as we proceed around the loop, we encounter the negative side on VA, so we'll write that as minus VA, and we set that equal to zero. And we'll go around this loop, and let's start in this corner. So the first thing we'll encounter is R2 times this current, which is I2. Then we'll hit the positive side on VB. And then, now I'm going to say we're going to drop in this direction. And that's fine. That's going to be R3 times, well, what's the current flowing in the direction we're moving through the loop? That's I2 minus I1. And we'll set that equal to zero. Now, 
If we want to group the terms that depend on the unknown currents, we could rewrite this as R1 plus R3 times I1 and then a minus R3 times I2 and that would be equal to the source voltage VA. And then we can group the terms in this equation. So for I1 we have a negative R3 and then for I2 we have R2 plus R3. And we'll take this source voltage VB to the other side, negate it, and that would be our two equations in two unknowns, assuming of course we know the values for the resistors and we know the, the source uh, voltages for the two sources. And once we solve for I1 and I2, then IA would be equal to I1, IB would be equal to I2, and IC would be I1 minus I2. Well, let's try this on a circuit with some values here. So we've got a 12 volt source here, a 3 volt source, a 6 ohm resistor, a 3 ohm resistor, and a 6 ohm resistor. Now what I'll do is define one mesh current in this direction and in this mesh and I'll call that I1 and then we'll define one over here call that I2 and then I'll see if I can solve for I1 and I2 and let's just suppose that maybe what we wanted to know was the current through this particular 6 ohm resistor and I'll call it I0 and let's see if we can solve for I0 well let's start here work our way around. Let's use Kirchhoff's voltage law. So the first thing we'll look at is the drop. As, as we move around the mesh we've got I1 moving in that direction times 6. So I'll write that as 6 ohms times I1. Then we'll come through here and we've got I1 minus I2 times 6. So let me write that as the 6 ohms and then I1, so we're going in this direction, so I1 goes that direction, I2 goes in the opposite, so we'll take I1 minus I2, and then as we come around we'll get a minus 12. We'll set that equal to zero. As we go around this loop, start in this point, work our way around, the first thing we'll see is 3 times I2, and then plus 3 and then the current flowing in this direction as we proceed is I2 minus I1 so I'll write that as 6 times I2 minus I1 and I'll set that equal to 0. Now let's group the terms that multiply I1, that is a 6 plus a 6, so we'll have 12 I1 and then minus 6 I2 and that's going to be equal to, I'll take the 12 to the other side. And for this equation I have oh, well, minus 6 I1, so that one gives me a negative 6 times I1 and then a 6 plus a 3, so that's 9I2, and that's equal to, well there's a 3 on this side, so we get a minus 3 on the other. Alright, so there's two equations and two unknowns. There's a variety of ways that we might solve those. We could use a calculator, we could use MATLAB. How about this one's not too bad. I, I think I can do this fairly straightforward way. What I'll do is just take twice I'll multiply this equation by 2 and add it. Well if I do that I have a minus 12I1 that'll give 0. I'll have an 18I2 minus 6 so that'll give me a 12I2 and then I'll have a negative 6 
and a 12, so that's going to be equal to 6. So that would tell me that I2, and remember these are going to be uh, currents in amps, would be equal to 1 half of an amp. Now, if I2 is 1 half, then I have 12 I1 minus 3 is equal to 12, or 12 I1 is equal to 15, so I1 would be equal to 15 twelfths, which would be the same as 5 fourths of an amp. Now, as I said, I wanted to solve for I0. So I0, that current through the 6 ohm resistor, we said that's going to be I1 minus I2. Right? The current that flows here in terms of the mesh currents is I1 in that direction minus an I2 that's flowing in the other direction. So that's going to be 5 fourths minus 1 half amps which would be 5 minus 2 fourths, 5 fourths minus 2 fourths which would be 3 fourths of an amp. And that's an example of how we'd use mesh currents to solve for the unknown current through this 6 ohm resistor. Of course, once we know I1, we also know the current through this 6 ohm resistor is simply I1, and the current through this 3 ohm resistor is I2.